Hey there, everybody. This is Jay Frost uh, from, of course, the Philanthropy Mastermind series. So happy to see you here, or to at least know you're here. I see people already in the chat. So that was my first prompt was to welcome you there. And I really appreciate all you folks, <laughs> Alicia, Joan, and I know others who are already saying hi, uh, Karen and Jemima and Shaley. And oh, wow, this is really great. Thank you so much for warming that space up. This is really a space for you. Since we can't hear your voices or see your faces, this is the next best thing. And we really want you to be a part of the conversation today, um, which we're going to have with Emily Rasmussen. So uh, for that, um, uh, please do feel free to use the chat like you're already doing throughout today, but also the Q&A. That's another great place for you, especially if you want to ask something and be anonymized, if that's your thing. We'll be monitoring both those throughout today. And I also, before we get underway, want to thank our sponsor, DonorSearch. Um, we won't be talking about them today uh, unless our guest chooses to mention them for some reason, but that's not because of any lack of affection or appreciation. If it were not for DonorSearch and its work, uh, first of all, we wouldn't be here. And we've done well over now 600 programs. We're doing about 120 plus this year, all because of their generosity. So my thanks to, uh, to Bill, to Sarah, and to the entire team at DonorSearch for giving us a platform to welcome people like the person we're about to hear from in the next few seconds, uh, Emily Rasmussen, talking about, of course, giving circles, which are so awesome because it is arguably the most important trend globally in terms of people coming together and fund and providing funding for the causes that are closest to them, whether that's physically closest or just closest to their hearts. That's happening in these giving circles in a really profound way. We're going to hear a lot about that in the next few minutes. But if you want to learn any more again about Donor Search or about the Philanthropy Mastermind series, you can do all that over the Donor Search site after today's presentation at donorsearch.net. And under the resources tab, you'll see, um, of course, recordings of a lot of the content here, including our podcast, which is really a lot of fun but also a um, schedule for upcoming programs. So I hope you'll check that out. Now with this, I, uh, I wanna make sure that we welcome Emily. Emily, thank you so much for, for being here today. Of course, Emily is the founder and CEO of Grapevine. If you don't know much about them, she probably won't be able to talk a lot about them today. We are definitely going to encourage you to take a look at what they offer. Um, and we'll make sure to have a link to Grapevine in the chat, but we're gonna be learning a lot about giving circles, building sticky communities of recurring support, for your nonprofit. And so Emily, thanks so much for, for being here. Thank you, Jay, for having me. Really appreciate the invitation. And thank you all in the chat. It's so fun to see where everyone is dialing in from. I always like to start calls with that prompt. So thank you for kicking us off and, and sharing. Um, well, as Jay mentioned, I'm Emily Rasmussen. I'm the founder and CEO of Grapevine, uh, and we're a, a platform dedicated to giving circles. And so I'm very excited to share with you today more about this giving circle model, uh, this broader giving circle movement, which has really hit a new stride right now that is a very exciting moment. And, uh, and then a little bit more about how you as a nonprofit uh, can get involved. So hopefully that's what you came here to learn about. I'm going to uh, share my screen, but as I'm getting that up, I'd actually love to just hear from you or, or see from all of you in the chat for a moment. Have any of you heard of a giving circle before you saw this session? Have any of you received funding from one, been in one? Fantastic, Alma, Bobby, Sarah, okay, oh good. Wonderful, that's so great. I feel like we're, we're making good progress then as a movement. Okay, lots of no's too, totally get that. Um, that is still a lot of the work that we're doing is around raising awareness, educating people about this model and this movement. So it looks like we have a really nice mix here today, which is, is great, that's perfect. Hopefully those of you who have heard of them will learn a little bit more about them. Um, and those of you that haven't will, will get a really nice introduction. Um, okay. So keep, keep sharing in the chat as you'd like and drop in some questions. I do wanna to get to questions a little bit later, um, but I am going to start just to give you the lay of the land a little bit more on what this giving circle model is, what this movement is all about and how you can get involved. Okay, so here we are. And, and I think this is really at the heart of it for nonprofits is really, you know, the magic of this giving circle model really is about these communities of donors that are coming together to connect with each other and give back as a collective. So there's really so much learning um, here for all of us in our own work. 
Okay, as I mentioned, I'm the founder and CEO of Grapevine. And um, my background, I actually used to work at a nonprofit. I worked at a, a few. I was at uh, NYU here in New York, uh, Lincoln Center for the Performing Arts. And so I definitely have that experience working in nonprofits, helping to fundraise for programs. I also have the, the experience of working in the crowdfunding space. And so um, my sort of initial concept around getting involved in this space was how can we how can we gauge a broader community and giving back together in a meaningful way? Um, so I share that because it really was something that I saw from the nonprofit perspective initially that inspired me to get involved in this movement. And uh, so it's really wonderful for me to have the opportunity to share how I think you know, all of you as leaders in nonprofits um, can best think about this model and movement and, and best engage with it. Uh, my goals for this session are, are these, and so I really do want to cover what the model is and more about this uh, landscape of collective giving, what it's all about and the current state of it, uh, but then how you can leverage this model for your work. And I will share a little bit more about Grapevine and how we're helping groups um, to, to launch and grow online, if that is helpful for you. Okay, so these are all giving circles. These are all examples of real giving circles in the world. Um, and I'm curious, those of you who have heard of giving circles, if you want to put in the chat, you know, where you've heard of them, or if you uh, have any particular experience with them, having received funding or anything like that, I always find the chat is a great place to share a little bit more about your direct experience that could be helpful for others. But um, as you can see, there's a broad range of types of groups of people that are coming together to give in this way. Right. And so we have larger groups that are coming together to give across broader areas like um, these groups of um, women that are coming together to give to a broader city. For example, there's a group in Los Angeles, uh, Los Angeles Women for Good, and they're giving to a broad range of causes across the L.A. area. You have smaller groups, those connected to friends or families um, that are giving in a way that engages uh, an existing network, right? People they already know, they're able to connect more deeply together by aligning around uh, shared values and things that they care about and making a difference together. You also have groups that are giving to causes. So they're not location specific, um, like our LA um, group uh, of women, but they're more cause specific. So maybe it's a group coming together virtually like this um, community here on the upper left where they're pooling money and giving back to a cause like healthy oceans or um, uh, uh, Latinas supporting Latinas across the country, right? And that's another type of model too that we often see where members are coming together to connect with the other members because of a shared identity. So lots of different ways that people are coming together, lots of different types of groups. And I think what's exciting about this is it just shows that this is a model that resonates with a broad range of people, no matter who your affinity group or cause is. The most popular giving circle model that we know of in terms of how people come together and go through this process of deciding as a group where to give is this one. Um, and in this model, just to give you a very kind of clear sense of how these groups can work, 100 people come together and everyone pitches in $100. So now this giving circle has $10,000 that it is pooled to give away to a nonprofit. In this particular model, members will nominate nonprofits for the group to consider. And ultimately three finalists will be presented to the group for a vote. Whichever one receives the most votes is the organization that gets that $10,000 check that quarter. And then the group does it all again, three months later. So in this model, each member is essentially donating the cost of one lunch per month, right? But as a collective, they're donating more than $40,000 per year. So a really powerful model when you think about everyday donors, right? People giving a uh, hundred dollars at a time, uh, how much impact they can have. This is just one model of many though. There are giving circles that pool $10 a month, some that pool $10,000 per member per year. Um, others that leave it open as far as how much each member is asked to contribute. And lots of different ways as well in terms of how these giving circles are deciding which nonprofits to support, 
right? So I just shared one version with you here, but some giving circles will have nonprofits apply to receive a grant. Um, others will do site visits and go out and um, identify nonprofits and have a kind of subcommittee that recommends nonprofits to the giving circle. So lots of different models here. Um, the kind of high level cause area or high level ways that these organizations of um, people come together, though, are typically around these three areas. So just to kind of summarize for you a little bit of what we saw in those previous slides, often and the more traditional model that we see is this local giving circle, right? I mentioned um, women in LA coming together to give to a broad range of causes or Denver Guys for Good um, or the Oakland Community Alliance lots of different groups that are coming together in the local area. The other type of group that we often see is a cause or community-based circle. So like I mentioned, healthy oceans or some other cause or community-based, right? Um, so whether it's it's women specifically or CTOs for gender equity, right? The, the kind of community of the membership um, can come together in different ways, depending upon, you know, who the other members are and, and who wants to connect with each other around this shared cause. And finally, what we're seeing more of now, but this is a more nascent trend, I would say, in the giving circle movement, is this idea of organizations starting their own giving circles. And so this could actually be an organization that is um, engaging a broader community to raise funds to grant out to other nonprofits, right? So a regranting organization. Or it could be a nonprofit that is raising funds to support their work directly to run programs. Um, and so we'll talk more about that in a moment. As I mentioned, that is a newer trend, um, but we'll definitely dig into that a bit more in a, in a moment here. Before we do that, I want to talk a little bit more about this collective giving movement. Um, it's a really exciting moment for all of us because just a couple of weeks ago, some brand new research came out. The first research we have had on this movement in about five or six years. And the results are really, really exciting. So what we see is that collective giving is rapidly growing and uh, now, as a movement, we have moved over $3 billion to nonprofits. So a very, very exciting number for, the, for all of us. About five years ago, that number was a billion. So um, we've tripled this movement in the last five years. And in addition to that, uh, the number of giving circles has um, catapulted up to 4,000 plus giving circles in the USA um, and over 370,000 people that have engaged in this model now. So a really exciting moment, and I do encourage you um, to look that research up. It was presented by the uh, Johnson School of Philanthropy. And so we'll we'll make sure to, uh, to share that out in our follow-up resources as well. But the other thing that we saw with all of this growth is that giving circles are now the fastest growing form of philanthropy. So you're in the right place. Um, great moment to be learning about it and thinking about it and just better understanding it, right? Because your donors might be hearing about this. They might be coming to you asking you, what is this giving circle model? You know, what? Um, how do we interact with them? Um, what, what's the opportunity here? And so a really great moment to be reading up on it. And this particular landscape research is a really wonderful place to start. The other thing that I like to note about this research and the insights from it is that it's not just about the numbers, right? Which of course are critical, how much money is being moved, how many people are engaging in this movement, but it's also about who, who is engaging in this movement. And so what we've seen is that giving circles are this powerful force that is shifting the narrative and, and changing perspectives um, around who is a philanthropist. And as you can see here, we're not only expanding um, the number of, or the people that are engaging in philanthropy and identifying as being philanthropists across a broader economic field, right? It's no longer just the high net worth, the ultra high net worth, but these are everyday givers. These are mass affluent, mass market individuals often, high net worth as well. We're definitely seeing a broad spectrum of people engaging in this giving circle model. Um, but this movement really has been driven by women, by everyday people who are giving $100, $500 at a time. 
We're also seeing a much broader diversity in terms of racial diversity and cultural diversity engaging in this model. People have the opportunity to come together with others and learn together and support things that they care about and feel part of something bigger that aligns with the communities that they know and care about. So I think it's a really compelling model we're seeing for um, for people to get engaged in philanthropy in, in some cases, many cases for the first time, right? It can be a great on-ramp into a bigger um, philanthropic life. It can also be a great complement to an existing one. As you can see here, it's also a very sticky model. Seven and a half years is the average length of membership in a giving circle, according to this latest research. So for any of you thinking about your recurring donor programs or, you know, thinking about how to engage donors in the long term, there's definitely something to be learned from this model. The other thing that we're seeing with giving circles is how that stickiness um, uh, happens, right? And when we talk to giving circle members, it often comes back to those relationships, those connections, those bonds that they get to form um, both within existing communities that they're a part of, existing affinity groups, but also how this model can help bridge across groups and help build new connections and expand people's networks. And so uh, you see here 82% join um, to establish relationships with like-minded people. Uh, this is so compelling, right? And such a great insight for anyone thinking about building communities of donors where it's not just about you know, the, the cause and the impact, which is critical, obviously, but it's also about who, who these donors get to be in community with um, and who else, you know, they get to connect with in order to make a bigger difference for this cause, for this community. Uh, so it definitely is a key driver here uh, for giving circles, both in terms of people who are thinking about starting them and wanting to expand and deepen relationships through that process, and also those who are joining them. And uh, the other thing that I like to note about where we are as a movement is I, I like to share this TED Talk and we can share this and follow up as well. Maybe some of you have seen it, um, but it's a great 12 to 15 minute talk. Sada Lomelin is the director of the Philanthropy Together organization, um, a great friend and partner of ours and helping to raise awareness about giving circles. And she did this wonderful TED Talk. And I think it's just a great example of how this grassroots movement, you know, that just started in communities across the country and grew slowly, slowly over the last several decades has now really hit this next level of main stage awareness. Um, and this is a really nice talk. I encourage any of you that have the extra time this weekend or week to check it out. Um, Sada does a really nice job of talking not only about the power of this collective giving movement, but also uh, about how that democratization is happening, um, the, the democratization and diversification of philanthropy, how that is not only affecting you know, who's giving, right? And who sees themselves as a philanthropist, but it's also actually helping to move money to a broader diversity of organizations. A lot um, of organizations that historically may have been relatively underfunded, right? But people who have a um, different perspective who are coming together in these giving circles are, are funding because they have lived experience, because they have that local connection, because all of the things that help inform, you know, where we give and why we give as we diversify the donor base, we also are diversifying where money is going. The last thing that I'll just note about this broader movement is that, uh, you know, as it's hitting this main stage awareness, it's also had this really incredible um, additional support now coming in from the biggest philanthropic players out there. And, uh, you know, here are just a few. There are others out there as well who are funding giving circles, who are helping to support them, to launch them, um, who are showcasing them across their broader platforms. So lots of, of support behind this movement, lots of excitement around how it really is engaging donors in a way that, um, you know, is really exciting, I think, for all of us in this space, especially given some of the challenges um, in the nonprofit um, fundraising space that we've all been uh, reading about and, and uh, you know, um, experiencing in recent months or years, I should say. Okay, well, that leads me to um, this next session that I want to share a little bit more, or next section I want to share a little bit more about, which is really, you know, how you can get involved and, and why, why you might want to leverage this model. Um, as I mentioned, you know, the way that I see this is that 
this is a really community-based model that is engaging people and um, building these sticky communities of recurring donors who want to make a difference. And I think at this moment in particular, right, we in the nonprofit sector are seeing some strong headwinds and there's some troubling numbers here from attracting new donors um, to engaging those donors and retaining those donors. And so I think a lot of us are in a state of needing to explore and rethink things. Um, and so that's why I'm so happy you're all here today to learn more about this model, because I think there's so much for us to learn from it, to implement within our own organizations, and also for us to you know, hopefully engage with in this broader movement um, in a way that can be valuable, not only to our organizations and our work, but the broader field and how donors, um, the work that we're doing to connect with donors where they are today, right? Um, one big note on this is kind of bringing it back around to that idea of fostering that belonging and purpose, that sense of connection and community. I think all of us uh, who have engaged in fundraising, who have engaged in, in nonprofit uh, building, know how important this is, right? To get people feeling connected, to go even beyond the mission to the movement, right? How do you get people to really buy in to this, um, to this organization, to this work that you're doing? And so much of that comes back to the sense of belonging, right? The sense of connection with your organization, your community, your, um, your impact. And so uh, this is a, another slide from the landscape research. But as you see here, that sense of belonging to a community, right? That is top. 91% of members um, reported this as an impact of being in a collective giving group. So very uh, high percentage of people really are finding those other like-minded people and feeling connected to them. Um, so I think this is a really important thing to keep in mind. And any time you think about community building more broadly, um, there's a great book, uh, and I, I should have put a slide up for this, but it's uh, I think it's called The Business of Belonging or A Sense of Belonging. And it's about like the key elements of building a community and how it starts with providing a sense of belonging and purpose. Okay. Well, I'm going to um, continue on these last few slides about how you might get started or think about getting started as a nonprofit. I do want to leave plenty of time for questions as well. So um, get those ready. And I apologize, I can't see the chat too easily while I'm sharing. So I'll turn to that in a moment. But um, but please do continue to, to think about any questions and get those ready. So the first thing that you might consider doing as a nonprofit is finding and joining a giving circle, right? Um, this is a the Global Giving Circle directory, and we can share this with you in follow-up as well. But this is actually a collaboration that we at Grapevine did with Philanthropy Together to try and map all of the giving circles that we know of so that people could easily look for giving circles near them, giving circles focused on causes that they care about, and identify ones to learn more about, reach out to, and potentially join. So this is a really great resource for you in thinking about how can you engage with giving circles. A lot of giving circles, um, you know, it's a relationship relationship based movement. It's a it's a community model. So uh, getting connected and starting to build those relationships, it's important in this model as well. So when you find giving circles that might be relevant to the work that you're doing, um, and you know the organization that you're a part of go ahead and join one of them. Um, reach out to those, those leaders, learn more about them, uh, but participate, get to know this model a little bit more and how it works. Uh, when you look up these, these giving circles in the directory, you can also learn more about their process for uh, identifying nonprofits. So as I mentioned earlier, that might be a members nominate and then vote process. In which case, you know, you joining the giving circle or sharing it with other communities, other members of your community that are advocates of your work um, who can participate and be a full participating member, but also, you know, share the great work that you're doing could be a really valuable way um, to potentially collaborate and partner with that giving circle and receive their, their future um, gift. 
Other groups will uh, share more with you if you reach out to them on their application process or, you know, whatever it is that they have, this is a great place to start to identify that shortlist and then figure out what the um, next step could be for, for you to um, connect with them. Once you're a member of those groups, like I said, you can not only nominate your, non your nonprofit potentially, but also a lot of these groups are looking for other ways to engage. There's something called the five T's, right? I'm sure many, most of us on this call are familiar. So beyond treasure, ties, testimony, talent, time, right? All these other ways that donors can support your mission and make an impact together. And we often find giving circles are full of people really um, hungry for those opportunities. So a great place for you to share volunteer opportunities um, with them and um, start to develop those relationships directly with individual members that might lead to bigger opportunities with them down the line in terms of them becoming direct donors um, or volunteers of your organization. We've even seen many Giving Circle members go on to discover nonprofits in a group and then become board members of that nonprofit later on. So a really wonderful um, way to think about connecting with this community and starting to engage um, with, with the group, but also individual members. Uh, as I mentioned here, you know, beyond you potentially joining one of these giving circles, sharing the short list of groups that you think are really relevant to your work with your board members, with your volunteers, uh, asking them to join as well, right? Asking them to participate in this model if it resonates with them. What a great way for them to connect with other like-minded people and also get the opportunity to share more about your work, right? With a broader community of people. So a few different ways to think about that, but starting with that Global Giving Circle directory um, is a great place to, to get started. And um, the next kind of big uh, bucket for you to think about is whether starting a giving circle that directly supports your nonprofit is a path that you would like to go down. Uh, so this is different, right, from getting in front of existing giving circles. This is more about how can you leverage this model that is obviously engaging so many people and growing so quickly at this moment where people's tastes have changed, people's expectations have changed. So how do we build, uh, how do we connect with donors today? in a new way that resonates with them, right? Well, this is a great example of how we can do that. So we are now seeing nonprofits starting giving circles that directly support their work in order to expand uh, their donor bases, right? Not only in terms of expanding the number of donors that support their work, uh, but also expanding the diversity of donors that support their work, right? Getting a, a broader range of people involved in their movement. It's also a really great way to engage those donors, to raise awareness, to educate people about the causes that you're working on. You have a community, you have a place to communicate directly with them, right? It's a, it can be a really powerful way um, to, to uh, share more and educate your donors more on the importance of your work and uh, you know how else they could get involved, right? Back to the five T's. And then finally, to retain those donors. So we talked a moment ago about retention being down and that being a challenge. And what we know is that um, engagement is key to retention and people feeling part of something, people having that sense of belonging. And so this is a really great way to think about um, retaining those donors as well. I put this slide up here because I think often, you know, in our minds from the nonprofit perspective, we're thinking, okay, I have this donor program and I have this fundraising program and we have um, these team members focused on these things. And I think it's helpful to maybe put it in the context of what you're thinking about right now or might be thinking about um, in, you know, in the future and this year and where a giving circle could be a helpful model to consider. So if you have an underperforming recurring donor program, I can't tell you how many nonprofits have come to me saying, oh yeah, we have a recurring donor program, but no one's happy with it, right? The donors are not engaged. They're not sticking around. Um, so if you have an underperforming recurring donor program or young patrons council, uh, and you're trying to find a way to increase engagement and increase um, the kind of, uh, you know, the retention of these communities, uh, but also the expansion of them and make it modern and make it kind of fun. Uh, this could be a great thing for you to consider. Think about structuring it more as a giving circle model. 
Uh, if you want to launch a recurring donor program or Young Patrons Council, uh, or if you want to launch donor affinity groups, I see this especially in uh, some of the larger nonprofits, uh, universities, uh, those organizations where you're trying to help build um, connection and affinity across an existing affinity um, within your donor base. If you want to engage more women donors or next-gen donors, these are two segments in the Giving Circle movement that are, are um, key to this overall movement. Women actually started the Giving Circle model. And even now, I think it's about 80% or so of Giving Circle members that we estimate are women. So this kind of collaborative, community-based way of connecting and giving back really appeals to women in particular. And it's, uh, you know, it's not surprising when we look at some of the research around how women like to give, and it often is giving to a broader range of causes and, um, and uh, giving collaboratively and socially. Next-gen donors as well, we see this a lot actually at Grapevine where some of our most exciting groups that are launching are high school groups, college groups, and uh, it's a really great way for them to feel a sense of agency and connection uh, to each other through this process of making a bigger impact. A couple others here, expanding your individual donors program. If this is of interest to you, if this is a goal of yours this year, this could be a great way to help you do that. And even finding more major gift donors. You know, one thing I like to, to note when I talk to nonprofits is often in the giving circle space, we talk about the everyday donor, right? And we're talking about how this model is engaging people who are donating $100 at a time, $1,000 at a time. Uh, but know that this is often a complement to a broader philanthropic life. And what we have seen some giving circles do very successfully is start a community of giving circle members and everyone donating at the same amount or you know, give what you can. But through that process of getting to know the community members, identifying those with more capacity those who and identifying more of their interests, right? Because they're in this community and they're sharing, you can learn so much more about these donors and what interests them. Um, and so it's a really great way to think about building a pipeline for your major gifts program um, in a really high value way. Okay, I'm gonna share a few examples with you and then I'm gonna go um, to the chat here in a moment. But uh, here's, a, here's a giving circle. This is actually a really exciting one. Uh, this was started by Edgar Villanueva and his, his nonprofit group. They've raised over $9 million and built a community of more than 600 people um, through this program since launching in March of 2020. Uh, I think this is one of, uh, it's a very exciting model. He's been extremely successful with this group. What I will say about Liberated Capital is they're, they're an organization that does re-granting. So uh, the funds that they raise, they use some of those funds to fuel their work, but then they also grant funds on to federal tribes and other nonprofits across the country. Uh, so uh, I think what Edgar has been able to do is build a bigger community around his, his cause, around his movement, um, and engaged a broader range of people in giving back to Native American communities um, across the country by building this community and educating this community through his giving circle. So uh, he actually does not ask the members to nominate or vote on nonprofits. He doesn't ask the members to vote on which programs at his nonprofit the fund should go to. Um, many others do, but he, he doesn't. He actually tells the group where funds are going and why. And um, while they don't have agency in deciding where funds go, they appreciate the opportunity to learn through him. And actually, um, one member suggested that they start a book club because a bunch of people were talking about his book and other books as they were trying to learn more. And uh, they launched a book club out of this giving circle. He invites them to um, events all the time uh, that are learning events, educational opportunities around the cause. So a really wonderful way to show that he's been able to, you know, really help educate more people on the importance of his cause while also raising funds from them to support it. Another example is this smaller organization, Positive Planet, who started a group to engage business leaders around their mission to support more diversity um, and um, support for 
small businesses. And so this, uh, this nonprofit is having all the funds go to them uh, to support their programs, but they are asking the members to uh, help decide which of their programs, their pooled fund, their pooled gift is going to support. So they're basically giving them the opportunity to have this gift be a directed gift, right? Um, instead of a general operating support. They're also, I think they've been really smart at thinking about who are the people who care about our mission? You know, who are those primary donors that we know care about what we do? And which, which segments of those like would want to come together and connect with each other as well as support our mission? And that's where this focus on business leaders came about. And because of this focus, it's enabled them to do some really interesting things like they launched a mentorship program so that the business leaders in their giving circle can opt in to be a mentor of some of the small business founders that are getting some of their grants and ongoing support. Uh, they did a really wonderful briefing, series of briefing sessions for new members into the giving circle, sharing more about their work and giving the members a chance to share about their experience and provide input and guidance as well. So a really um, a newer and smaller giving circle, but one that has really put uh, the community members and um, their engagement uh, and kind of at the heart of their overall uh, giving circle experience. And one last uh, one here, this is the Newman's Own Foundation Community Fund. And this one's interesting as well. This is um, a little bit different in that Newman's Own is connected to the broader Newman's Own company and they have a broader community of people as a result of that, right, who know about their work. Uh, but in this model, Newman's Own actually put funding into the pool initially. They had some funding and uh, they asked their community to join the Giving Circle to help them decide where the funding should go. So this is a fun uh, kind of example of how you can turn it on its head a little bit. Uh, what they also did is they added a match so that anyone else who wanted to contribute into the pool could, and then that donation would be matched as well. Uh, so this Giving Circle launched at the end of last year, and they already have, uh, I think, grown it to over 600 members in a very short period of time. And uh, they're looking to continue to grow that. And in the next round of, of um, granting, they're actually engaging the community and helping them to decide uh, where funds go as well. So a few different examples for you there on uh, direct nonprofit support, re-granting, and uh, foundations. So a key part of all of this, as you can tell, is the community building, right? And how do you actually do that? I think often for nonprofits, we see that there's a really strong understanding of one-to-one -one relationship building, right? You know how to take a dinner to coffee or dinner, a donor to coffee or dinner. Um, you know how to engage with people and build those relationships, right? And learn about them. Uh, but the kind of the next level here, right, where we are encouraging people to go, where we're seeing a lot of excitement and engagement from donors is this model of one-to-many community building, right? How do you connect with donors as a community, not just on a one-to-one -one level? And how do you help facilitate those donors to connect with each other so that they're building this community? And ultimately, those donors then are building the stickiness of your community so you don't have to do it all yourself. Right, that's the kind of scalable part of all of this. And so here's just a high level overview on how we uh, think about community engagement in that first year for some of these groups. This uh, has worked for many groups that are on a kind of quarterly uh, um, cadence. And so what we have seen is that in that first quarter, as you're just starting a group, uh, you can think about hosting, you know, introductory sessions, briefings, um, engaging those members as people are joining and welcoming, welcoming them in and really making them feel part of something and even having a kind of kickoff event to really make everyone feel like, oh, we've officially launched, right? We're now part of this group. The second quarter can be uh, largely about continued engagement, right? So continuing to engage those members while they're excited, getting them involved and encouraging them to invite others. So much of the, the power of community building is also around those members feeling so connected and bought in that they think of someone else that also um, could be a part of this, that they would like to invite in. It's very different, we have found, uh, asking donors to invite another donor in to join a community 
than it is asking them to ask someone else to make a donation, right? It goes, it, it moves beyond the transaction into the community. It's, it's more of an offering. Here's an opportunity to be part of something. Uh, the third quarter is uh, connections. So again, just in an example here, how you could think about structuring this, but uh, in, the, in this third quarter, it's about connecting those members to each other, right? So again, trying to move beyond you having to facilitate everything and uh, trying to get those members to connect with each other and build some of that stickiness directly. And then finally, on, uh, focus on the impact, right? So, okay, we've come together, we've connected, we've, we've thought through what we want to support, and now let's focus on the impact we've been able to have together. And whether that is a, um, you know, an opportunity for your donors to help decide where the funds go within your nonprofit, or it's just an opportunity for you to share where funds have gone and the impact that they've had, right? Bringing it back around to that overall impact and what you've been able to accomplish together as a group is really powerful. So I will just take this moment to say we have a more detailed donor community engagement plan, uh, a, a kind of template that any of you could take and use as you would like. Um, and so if you're interested in that, you can go ahead and email me at partnerships at grapevine.org, and I'm happy to send that to you. Um, we'll also be sending these materials in follow up as well. Okay, and the last little bit I just want to share, as I mentioned, Grapevine is the only platform dedicated to giving circles, and as a result of that, we have now um, helped to launch and support over 1,100 active groups on the platform. We have more than 70,000 members in these groups, and together, this community has moved almost $35 million to thousands of nonprofits across the country. We actually have groups in every state across the country. So just know that um, if you're looking to learn more about this model, this movement, if you're looking for support in deciding you know, how you might get engaged, um, Grapevine is a great place to start. We have lots of great free resources and tools and we're happy to guide you in whatever way makes sense for you. Whether it's you know starting a, a giving circle for your nonprofit and leveraging our, our tools and resources for that, or just learning more about it and asking, you know, um, where you can find more information. Feel feel free to reach out to us um, at any point. I do hope that you know all of you take away from the session today that uh, that this really is an exciting movement, an opportunity for your nonprofit. And so maybe this is the first exposure you've had, or um, maybe you've you know had lots more, and this is just a next step. But uh, but really, I think it's very early in nonprofits learning about this model, getting involved. And so I think it's wonderful that you're here to learn more and uh, know that you're early. You're early in this. And uh, that's going to be you know, a great opportunity for you and, um, and your organization. Here are some of those resources I mentioned. So we will send those along. And I also just want to note that if you are looking to connect with the broader movement uh, and learn a bit more about giving circles and who's in them and um, talk more about the five T's that I mentioned and how giving circles are thinking about um, and supporting everyday people to, to give back together. Definitely check this out as well. So this is We Give Summit. It's a, a celebration of collective giving. It's coming up very quickly, May 7th to May 9th. It's virtual and it's free. So there's no reason not to check it out. Um, go to wegivesummit.org, uh, I believe, and or just Google that um, and check that out. We'll send that and follow up as well. But uh, this can be a really great place for you also to take that next step beyond this call and just learn more about uh, this model and, and movement. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing and I see lots of things coming in in the chat, which is great. Um, and so I'm just going to take a minute to look and see if there are any questions that have come in. And uh, and Emily, just to help, because yeah. I know the chat can be crowded sometimes. Yeah, I think please. the first one had to do with young patrons. Uh, a couple of folks asking about if you could define that a little bit. Sure. What young define young patrons? I uh, I think that's an interesting question because uh, I've worked at different nonprofits and they've defined it a bit differently. So um, I, at one organization, I remember the young patrons council was anyone like forty five years or younger. Uh, so that might not be how you define it as at your nonprofit, but typically, uh, you know, as, as nonprofits are thinking about engaging a younger demographic, uh, what I've seen is that's probably the, the largest uh, segment that I've seen a nonprofit define as a young patron, 
But whether it's 45 and younger or 35 or 25, uh, that segment, that younger generation that you're trying to engage in your work, that's what I mean. Okay. Um, I do see some more questions. So Jay, feel free to jump in and flag anything for me, but I can also just start to work down through the chat Ooh, a little bit. Here I think too. the next one I saw had to do with um, stats and data points, if I'm, if I'm correct. And that was uh, about whether or not you have stats or data points on the benefits or impact that a giving circle can have on a major gift pipeline and major gift pipeline development. Any thoughts on that? I love this question. I see it now, uh, Michelle. So thank you for that. I don't have great stats on this. Um, in this latest research, uh, it did not address this per in particular, right? As I mentioned, like nonprofits engaging giving circles as a pipeline, I think is is newer. And so um, I don't have any great stats on this, but what I will say is that um, we at Grapevine have done some work in looking at different giving circles and identifying within those groups, higher net worth donors. Um, and then from there, like based on their engagement in giving circles, you know, their interests and seeing if there's interest and capacity to get involved in a bigger way. And uh, just anecdotally, that has been uh, very successful with a few giving circles where we've been exploring that model. And so I think if you were to think about any, any giving circle as a, as a community of donors, just like you would you know, any other community of donors, what would you do as a next step if you were a major gifts person, right? You'd be like, oh, let's find out information about them. Let's find out what they care about. Let's find out if they um, have capacity beyond their contribution to this thing. And so that typical research that you do, if you apply it to these groups um, that you build um, through this model, uh, I, I've seen that be successful, like I said, for a, a handful of groups that we've seen um, undertake this. But a great point. I think there's more research to be done on this and hopefully some more case studies. So if any of you get involved in this space and you have information to share, please do, because I think that could be helpful for others. I did see that I missed something in the Q&A as well. Do you see that one there? It's um, about people who have a circle and uh, and then whether or not they're, they're listed in the directory. Yes. Okay. So I see it now. Thank you. Uh, but as an independent C3 dedicated to philanthropy, we did not need to run it via Grapevine. Great. Yeah. And just so you know, I mean, we we host, as I said, over 1,100 groups, but there are, like I mentioned, 4,000 groups that we've mapped, right, in the global directory. So lots of different ways that you can run these groups um, separate from the platform. Uh, there is a place, uh, whoever posted this, and for anyone else, if you're in a giving circle or connected to one, you can add it to the directory without having to be on Grapevine. So if you go to, uh, you can go to grapevine.org and in the resources section uh, on the top menu, there is the Global Giving Circle directory is linked there. If you go in, there's directions there on how to add your giving circle. And please do, because that is a, a wonderful resource for anyone looking to find groups and join them. And we actually have an embeddable version of it that is now on the Charity Navigator website, the Global Impact and Giving Compass websites and more. So um, you definitely want your group listed in there because you might get some great new members through all of those um, through all of those placements on those other platforms. And then the next one I see is uh, from Jemima, who had asked about uh, how um, how you, one encourages these donors to give both uh, to the other nonprofits chosen by the Giving Circle as well as to your own. I can imagine this is on a lot of people's minds. And then also, do uh, organizations see any drop in the dollar amounts that the donor is giving individually to the original nonprofit? Mm. Right. Yeah, I think there's always this kind of question, you know, am I going to be cannibalizing gifts, that kind of thing? Um, and that's why I really like to stress that we have seen and the research has shown that giving circles are a really wonderful complement um, to the other types of giving that people do. Right. It's a particular model. And so when you think about a giving circle, you're often kind of in the very nature of it, you're giving up direct control uh, because you are now pooling money and helping to decide with a group where that money goes. And so what that means is that uh, people who really care about a particular organization or a particular cause, they continue to do that direct giving, right? That's still an important part. This is a whole other type of experience that they can get 
Um, and so it's, it's not, uh, you know, it, they don't cannibalize each other so much as what we've seen is that it, they, they expand, right? They, they expand um, people's experience and overall philanthropic activity. And so uh, as far as donors giving to, to other nonprofits chosen by the giving circle, as well as to their own nonprofit, yeah, I mean, like I said, we what we see is this becomes a great community, a, a sharing space where if people come into a giving circle and they have a nonprofit they care about, what a wonderful opportunity for them to share this cause that they know is important and this nonprofit that they know is doing great work with this broader community of people that want to make a big impact, right? And so actually one of the three top, top three reasons that we see people joining giving circles on Grapevine when we ask them, and we've asked tens of thousands of people now who have joined these groups, why are you joining this group? Um, there are three main reasons that people join these groups. The first one is um, to make connections, right? Connecting with like-minded people, just like we saw in the slides um, earlier. People want to connect with other people. It's it's really powerful. And I think especially we're in this moment in, in time that is just unique, right? Where we've come out of COVID, a lot of people moved. I hear that so often. People haven't built those local connections yet. People, their work has gone online. So now they they don't have that office interaction anymore. Uh, lots of reasons that people are looking to make connections. I mean, keep in mind, we're also amidst a loneliness epidemic. So what a powerful, meaningful way to build those connections. The second one is uh, is impact, right? I want to amplify my impact. So just the math of it, $100, 100 people, that's $10,000. When we talk to people about those gifts, they feel such a sense of connection to it. That was a $10,000 gift that I was a part of, right? I helped to build that playground. I helped to do this. Like there's such connection to that impact. And so there's, it's just very tangible. Um, and then the third thing is, I want to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Basically, people want to share. People want to um, increase their own impact by sharing the causes and nonprofits that they care about with a broader community. So how powerful is that for me? If I know this organization is doing great work, I can now bring it to a community and now I can get 100 people to support it all at once. Right. So there's a, a real um, power in that for donors where they want to bring it into the community. But there's, you know, that learning opportunity for them too to learn what other people care about and support that and be part of a bigger kind of a bigger um, pool of impact, if you will, um, or portfolio of impact, maybe I should put it. And uh, it, I don't think it takes away from those direct donations, but really just gives them an opportunity to um, double down on the impact they can have for that particular organization through this community. Okay, and I do the, see the last one. one I see here yeah. is is that one about um, if the giving circles need to be five hundred one c threes. So that's a great question. Um, so what I'll say is on the you you don't have to be a five hundred one c three, but it depends on what your goal is, what you're trying to accomplish. Most giving circles have. Um, either become their own 501c3s because they got quite large and they needed to pool all this money, or um, they worked with a community foundation, or they work with Grapevine, right? All of these are ways where you can have a C3 um, on the back end, and that enables you to pool donations and those donors to get that charitable tax deduction, and then have just the one larger uh, check go to each nonprofit. Um, so that is one way to think about it, right? Is that you, it's essentially like a fiscal sponsor or DAF sponsorship model typically is, is what we've seen. Um, so no reason for you to go create your own, but some of those bigger ones we have seen do that. And in fact, some of those have gone on to become women's funds and community foundations, right? You think about it, like this is the kind of most community-based version of that and some grow up to be quite big, so. There's there's been so much growth in this area, and you've witnessed a lot of and participated in a lot of it because of your uh, all the work that you've done through Grapevine. Um, what's been the biggest surprise? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, I think the biggest surprise, honestly, I I because I believed in this movement and I see it growing, and it just is kind of you know it's doing all the things that I think those of us in it for a long time have said it's doing, and we're so excited to now have the data showing it's doing it. 
Um, but I think what's been really surprising and exciting is to see the broader players now coming into the space, right? Wanting to adopt these community-based models in a way that I hadn't anticipated at least. And I shared earlier the, the Newman's Own Foundation example, right? So they put $100,000 in the pool and said, we want to engage our community to give this money away. I've had other corporate foundations come to me with the same thing. I've had other um, companies and foundations come to us and say, we want to uh, give you $100,000 in funds to match donations from giving circles. Right. So what a wonderful way to amplify the impact of all of these groups. If your group's pooling $10,000 to give away, imagine now if we were able to add $10,000 to that gift. And now it's $20,000 because we got a matching gift from a company or a foundation. So those are the types of things that um, we've started to see coming into this space now, I think, as more awareness is growing around it. Um, and I just yeah, I guess that's been a bit surprising to see all of the interest around it. And I'm just really excited about where that's where that can lead for all of us. Yeah, it's, it sounds like it's almost an antidote to the uh, the bowling alone problem where yeah. more and more people were doing their own thing and then they they woke up and said, wait a minute, where where did everybody go? And this is a place for them to get together again. So that's pretty extraordinary. I think you're right. I, yeah, that's such a great point. And I, I think um, we're just, we're not only seeing people wanting to connect with each other through this model, but we're seeing, you know, these existing players want to be a part of that. I like to say I, I see a future now where corporate foundations are going to become community foundations, you know, and, and I think Newman's own foundation and some of these others that we're seeing, we're talking to now, they, they see that they want to engage with the community. Um, so I think all of us in the nonprofit space, whether you're at a foundation or just in a nonprofit, how can you take your model and turn it into a community model? Um, and whether it's a giving circle starting one or not, I just think there's so much great learning here. Um, that you can bring back to your organization. Yeah, um, it seems to humanize everything. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you so much for for all of this. Uh, and w once again, if you don't mind just saying how it's best for people to follow and reach you just so they can hear it as well. Oh yeah, please. Uh, so you can you can reach us at grapevine.org, O-R-G. And um, I, LinkedIn is my favorite social channel. So you'll find me active there, Emily Rasmussen, uh, Grapevine on LinkedIn. So please do connect with me there. And, um, and you are most welcome to email me directly, uh, partnerships at grapevine.org. Uh, that email goes straight to me. So if you want any of the resources or have questions, want to chat more, yeah, please do email me and I'd, I'd love to be in touch. Thank you very much, Emily. And I also want to uh, call attention to something we mentioned in the chat, which is that there will be an email follow-up. So uh, if you're here with this live, um, you will re be receiving the, an email in the next 24, 48 hours with a link to the slides, uh, which Emily is kind enough to share uh, a recording of this so you can share it with colleagues and, and uh, you know hopefully generate enthusiasm for giving circles among your friends and colleagues. Um, but in terms of the other materials that she mentioned, again, partnerships at grapevine.org, um, want to make sure that uh, that you have that and can go and take a look at the Grapevine site. Really wonderful work that Emily and her colleagues are doing there. Um, and of course, we've also put that link for the We Give Summit in the chat, uh, and that's that's going to be a pretty extraordinary meeting. So if you if you uh, are interested in this subject more broadly, you might find that uh, of interest. That's uh, again May seventh through 9th. Um, I also want to um, encourage everybody, if you don't already know this, to join us on Thursday. We have a session coming up with someone who's been very popular in this series, uh, Emily Marcus and Tomi, um, who's over at Skidmore, and her and a colleague in the industry, Cora Burns, who's at Cornell. They're going to be joining us to talk about empowering philanthropy, the dynamic duo of prospect research and parent fundraising. It is something that works very well in that space. They'll be sharing that uh, with uh, our audience at 3.30 p.m. on Thursday. That's 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Um, so please join us for that. Uh, and um, also for the podcast, which you can catch wherever you like to listen. And we have interviews running right now with uh, the award winners from AFP this year. So I'm sure you'll enjoy that. Um, but again, my thanks to you, Emily, for hanging out and for sharing so much today. And to everybody in the audience for, for being here and uh, and absorbing all this great goodwill that's coming from this movement and the work that Grapevine does. We'll look forward to seeing you all next time. Until then, take care.